So far, we've talked about forces, coordinate systems, force vectors, and things like that. Now it's time to take forces and kind of expand upon them. And right now, I'm in quarantine, you're in quarantine, so we have to use the examples that I have around. Um, so what I'm going to use is, here is my daughter's basketball. All right, basketball, good, because it has lots of colors you can see. Now, I can move this basketball around using a force. So I can apply, apply a force directly up, and this force causes the basketball to go through translation. Right? But everybody knows we don't just translate a basketball, we give it a spin, so that it has a rotation. So when I shoot or throw the basketball up, it has both a translational component and a rotational component. Translation is the up and down, and the rotation is the spin around the ball. When I spin the ball, we see that it has an axis which it spins around, and if I could line the laces up really well, you could see that it's spinning around the center of the ball, and if I apply forces on either side, the ball will spin around this axis going, which would be in and out of your screen. Now, I'm not going to just have the ball here because it's kind of small, but let's draw up what's kind of going on with that ball. So, if I just have the basketball, and I look at its center of mass in the middle, if I apply a force at the center, this causes translation. And that was kind of the first thing that I showed you with the basketball. If I have the basketball and I apply a force directed away from the center slightly, but up still, I'm going to say force off center. That caused both Translation and rotation. Now, why did this happen? Um, first, the easiest thing here is to create our wonderful coordinate system acting in the center of the basketball. I'm going to say up is y, to the right is x. Now, some portion of the force at the bottom is acting directly through the y-axis. So it has a Y component. But also some portion of this is acting along the X axis. So it has an X component. Now, the Y component here is the same as this force here, which makes the translation happen. The X component occurs in the same direction as the X axis, but has a distance here away from the center of the basketball. So when we have this force times distance, we created something we call a moment. Okay? So, What we learn, or what you can basically simplify from this, is that forces cause translations and moments cause 
rotation. All right? And a moment is simply force times distance. Now, I showed you one, or I tried to show you the best I could, one special case where I had the ball and I tried to push up with one hand and down with the other hand. And I'll even try it one more time here, see if I can get it right or to my best of ability. To spin it with as little translation as possible. It's pretty hard, actually, with a basketball. But the idea is here, if we have one force acting up and one force acting down so that are equal and opposite that are spaced apart a certain distance, we'll create a moment that is force times distance, but since the forces are equal and opposite, there will be no resultant force. So there should be spinning without any translation. Now, the idea of two equal and opposite So two equal and opposite forces based a distance apart are called a force couple. And a force couple causes pure moment. And it's important to note that that moment acts at 90 degrees to the force couple. So when I tried to show you the basketball spinning around its center point, which would be about right there, if I could put a perfect moment on this, it would spin, it wouldn't translate up and down, and it would spin around that center point 90 degrees to where the force couple occurs. We say that basically the moment occurs at 90 degrees to the force couple. And the idea of force couples and moments are kind of the final thing we need so that we can get really into statics. Because moments are also called by forces. They're just a force applied some distance away. 